Hey, Bill Hurd from Hackaday. Today we're at the Convex 19, uh, 19? No, 2015 in Las Vegas. It happens to be the 30th anniversary of the Commodore 128, but also the Amiga. Next week, the Amiga uh, anniversary will be held at the uh, Computer History Museum uh, out on the West Coast. So I'm here with the Fresno Commodore User Group Treasurer, Dick Costell. How you doing? We were just looking at how these guys pack their cars. <laughs> We've decided that when Robert's time comes to go, it's going to be crushed under an avalanche of Commodore. And that's Robert Bernardo, the president of, of the Fresno Commodore yes. Users Group. And uh, I was an EMT for many years, and we call that the secondary injuries, when yes. the things inside right. the car. We call the tertiary injury when your brain actually slaps the front of your skull. So. <laughs> And uh, how long have you been coming here to these? Um, well, we started in, this is the 11th one. I didn't wow. get the first one. I think I came to the second or third one. I've been to about half of them. And, and why did you choose Vegas to do this? Uh, it's a happening place, and we got a lot of help from the Las Vegas Club, the five C. Okay. Okay, so and, uh, local, right. there's a little bit of extra attraction yeah, as, a, as opposed to uh, Cincinnati, Ohio, or right. something like that. So. And, and what do you have here? Uh, we're going to give away a 128B, uh, all in one combo. And that, that's a metal one. This is, this is a metal one. So right. It doesn't describe. We're giving away some other things that are kind of scattered and hidden. But, uh, okay. On a RAM link, well, we don't. This is not a Commodore product. It was made by a company called CMD. Right, right. Creative so. micro designs that uh, came up with the Jiffy DOS chip to begin okay. with. Okay. And, uh, and so with the millions of, of Commodore products sold, such as the Commodore 64, there was a huge market, I take it, for uh, aftermarket things, CMD yeah, yeah, being yeah, one of them. What's your name? Mario Lupi. And where are you from? Um, I'm actually from Los Angeles, but originally I was born in Italy. And, and were, you, were you here yesterday or yeah, just today? Yeah, I was today? Here yesterday, okay. Yeah. okay, so you got to see Leonard Tremiel speak. Yes. Wasn't that something? It was great. So. And, and uh, here's I like another. Interaction between, I like the interaction between you two guys. Uh, we only really met once, and it was for 10 minutes really? before. And uh, it's just, you know, I, I, I wouldn't be around if it wasn't for the company his father made, right? So, so um, what do you have here? You have a 128 also. I have a 128 also with a... Um, it's the 30th anniversary of this. Exactly. <laughs> and I put on a 1541 Ultimate card. I don't know if you're familiar with that. No, I, I actually know nothing about the add-ons. I'd, I'd be embarrassed, except they came after so long after me, it doesn't even matter. And I have a 1084S monitor. OK, and that's, just, that's the broken. Omega monitor. Right, but right. it works very well with this. I automatically see the character line noise in there. See that? Right. Yeah, I know what causes that. <laughs> It's in the VIC chip, or it's actually it's an interaction with the the, mon the modulator and the VIC chip. And then and it's nice. Yeah. I'm moving to 64 mode just because. Now you know about holding down the Commodore key, right? Right. Yeah, I, I invented that. Uh, <laughs> yes, we we I had know. to. <laughs> we needed the Z80 to get involved early, so we. Uh, now, do you know about the Easter egg in the Commodore 128 mode? I read somewhere, and actually last year or two years ago, at one of these conventions, they gave a piece of paper that show how the, to type in the SIS and get all the, the stuff. Well, put it in 128 mode. Let's try it. And the guys put this in without telling me, because they knew that I, if, if ever they ran out of ROM, I would tell them to pull it out, because I didn't want to hear them complaining about being out of ROM if they had the room for an Easter egg. So, sis. Three two three two eight hundred, comma one two three, comma four five, comma six. Enter. And that's us. That's us. So it says brought to you by software. Fred Bowen, Terry Ryan, Von Ertwein. Fred did the kernel. Terry did the version basic. Which somebody asked me yesterday uh, why we were still using BASIC from Microsoft, and the answer is we didn't. We just had to leave their uh, copyright notice up, but uh, Terry rewrote it, literally from ground up. And then Von Ertwein did the CPM. So what I didn't know was that this was in there, and they had my name in there, but then they put in the name Herdware to, to represent my last name. Right. Dave Haney and Frank Play, and of course uh, Dave's well known for the Omega He's stuff. There. So And link arms don't make them. That's, that's uh, Terry Ryan. The, the vegetarian of the group, and uh, we always got messages when we first turned things up. Uh, I was taught at early age, don't take any wooden nickels by the messages that Terry would show up. So, is that a piece 
comment. It's a peace comment. Yeah, absolutely is. Yeah. Yes. You meet all kinds at these kind of old conventions, and uh, this here was a middle manager yeah. back in the days of Commodore. Yeah. He was in charge what? of stuff. He, he's still making the same noises. He, he, he worked in the software engineering department and thought we should still be doing everything the hard yeah, way. Yeah, so. we should. And your name is? I am Theodore Sheepdog. Yeah, you were in charge of software. I remember you. Yeah, no, do you really? <laughs> I had longer hair back then. So did I. Yeah. <laughs> I had hair back then. <laughs> so do, does the dog own any Commodore computers? Yes, yes, yes. I work with the kids at Glad Tidings Assembly, and we have a Commodore 128. Never heard of it. Right. So that was like a doorstop for Barnes that came out back in the 80s? Well, no, that was a great, wonderful computer. It has two computers in one. You can use the 64 version or the 128 version. And it's really, 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 really fun. Or CPM. CPM. What is that? I haven't used that part. <laughs> Well, that's, you know, being a dog, it, it's, it's understandable. Yeah, you try doing it with these paws. <laughs> you try that. The, uh, well, you know, can you operate a VT100 keyboard? That's how we designed the keyboard on the 128. Well, first of all, what? <laughs> I'm just a dog. Okay, so a reality what do you check. Expect? There. <laughs> dog, don't give me a hard time. I'm all right, sorry, no, I'm uh, it's, I'll call. I'll call the pound. I no, no pound for me. <laughs> I've done that before. The food's so, rotten. Right, and 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 you live life in dog years, so it's, yes. it's life short enough. It's, yeah, I'm uh, seventy. Yeah. And, and we used to we used to kid about that at Commodore because ah. we lived compressed time and yeah. we slept. And so what did you do at Commodore? Uh, well, we're filming you. What did I do? Yes. Oh, you are filming me. Yes, we are. Well, I was an engineer at Commodore back in the 1980s. Wow. And I designed the Commodore 128. Yeah, which, which the is one the 30th you're anniversary. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And that that was an unusual computer because the management had left didn't tell us what to do, so uh, I actually took a piece of paper, sat it down on my desk, and drew it out, and, and ran with it. Wow! So it was it was a time when four people could, could make a computer and, and take it to production. Yes, you could. And, and the team grew yeah. as we got there, but yes, it all did. came from a piece of paper. Very good. So and your name, sir? I'm Bill Hurd. Bill Hurd! Bill Hurd, big time, big shot at Commodore. As, ah. as in hardware. As in hardware. 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 How about dog? <laughs> I've heard of that. Really? Yes, you can use it with paws. Yes, paws 128. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. It's nice meeting you. Slap my paw. Slap my paw. All right, I'm here with Forrest Nettles of the Las Vegas computer. Of, uh, what's the name of your group? A question? Five C's. Okay. <laughs> okay, and so you do you do Commodore. Okay, and uh, so you're one of the reasons that they're here in Vegas is because of the local factor. I'm told. Okay, Tell, show us what you got here. Well, I brought CDTV. And I've got a keyboard, mouse, and drive. And this so is a what? CDTV. Okay. And it's a complete setup, so it'll run Workbench and Amiga programs off floppy, as well as off the CDs. And, and what year was this made, do you think? This was made in about uh, 92, I think. Okay. Okay. Right in that neighborhood. Right. So what I call during Act 3 of the Greek tragedy in mm -hmm. three acts. Yeah. Oh, I brought my SX. And, and these were cool. They, I mean, there were transportable computers back in the day, such as K-Pro and Osborne's, but none of them were really a color game machine. And this did everything a Commodore 64 did. Everything. Everything. And, and it's all in one system. And so we'd carry these around, but then you ended up with bruised ankles carrying the dang things from the, the slightly off-center weight. So, and how long have you had this? Uh, well, this one or my first one? This one here. This one I've had probably about five years. And and did you have one in the original? I had one, not when they were brand new, but I got one back in the 90s. Okay. We, we had a gold version of the Commodore 64 for the 10 millionth uh, Commodore 64. Had you, mm -hmm. you, you've, you've maybe heard of that? I don't I know. I think I have heard of that. And um, I, the story goes that when they went to find the 10, 10 millionth one to pick it out, a guy walked into the back of uh, the R&D lab stood in front of a junk pile going, it's here somewhere, hmm, there it is, and he picks out one and we spray painted a gold. <laughs> And so we had it in a glass case so people couldn't tell it was only painted. Yeah. And that was the 10th family. So, well, excellent. Thank you for the show here. It's been excellent. And uh, uh, it was great, great meeting you. And uh, we'll see what else happens today. Nice meeting you.
you going to have a door prize raffle. And, uh, Is it the whole oh. door or just the whole door? That's whole, right, the whole door. Thank God. The whole door. And then we have these uh, replica T-shirts that the CBM engineers wore back in the day, back in Bill Hurd's day. Bill Hurd's day. My day. <laughs> And, uh, Can you explain what a Jackbuster is? What, what is this t-shirt? What is a Jackbuster? Well, let's see, let's see. The CPM engineer who told me this story was, like this was after Jack Trebell had left, the engineering department wanted to wear these? Wear these in the, engi in the engineering department. And they, they built these. And this was a play off of Ghostbusters back in the day. The yep. movie Ghostbusters back in the day. And we actually did it for the CES show. Oh, for so this. yeah, we took them oh. specifically. We got them like a couple days before the CES show. Wait, wait, you wore this all at CES during setup and stuff. <laughs> we did. Yes, yes, we were digging hard. <laughs> so it's a, uh, you know, a, a wise man once told me, uh, or, or once said that uh, uh, business is war. Oh. Jack Tramiel said that. Okay. <laughs> so once he once he declared war, uh, everything was was legal. So. Oh, okay, got it. All right, and what's your name? Jim Drew. And how long have you been coming to these? Uh, this is my fourth one, I think. I got in the retro competing about four years ago. Okay. At the coaxing of a lot of people. And, 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 and why, why retro? Um, why, why Commodore? Well, I've done more work with Commodore since 1977. Okay. So it's been okay. a while. <laughs> right, time, right. Actually. So this is kind of like return to some of your roots or, or yep. at least the knowledge that yeah, you I had. Yeah, I worked with Commodore products uh, until the death of Commodore, and we actually stayed in open business probably until 97. Yeah. Anything you can show real quick? Actually, Whoa. yeah, I got a couple things. I, I make a new product that's called uh, Supercard. Back in the day, I made a, a product called Supercard, which was uh, an expansion Whoa. for the disk drive. Okay. So this is the modern version of it. And, and, and what kind of technology is it using? We're using a microprocessor now. Which, which one? A PIC Micro. It's a okay. PIC, PIC 24. Very popular. Uh, it's running at uh, 40 MIPS. Right. And uh, basically it's all hardware Just capture. Just emulates whatever you needed to do in code. Yep. 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 So I did this. I've got another device that I'm working on right now. It's called a MicroDrive. This is actually is a complete 1541 disk drive emulation, exact. And it wow, actually, it including the bugs and stuff? Yeah, exactly. It's got shift register bug and the, the VIAs, the whole nine yards. Okay. Well, was that you guys talking about yesterday where we didn't, was, they did not write qualify the ROMs in the 1541s? Oh, yeah, that's where you could actually write to the ROM. You could ruin the, yeah, you really? got a Trojan that would break your disk drive yeah. because the designers who weren't from our group right. uh, had, had said, uh, yeah, here's the address for the ROM, the read only memory, but yep. they didn't. And look at the read write line to see if it was a read cycle for the read only memory. Right. So it said in a, a write loop and until repeat yeah. until burnt, you know? Right. Yeah, I so. pop a fuse and uh, got bad data at that point. So. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Well well thank you for your time here. Uh, it may be problem if this goes up on Hackaday if it oh, makes no, it through edit. Excellent. So how are you doing? What's your name? Good morning. My name's John Farrell. Is this your first Convex, or do this you come to all of these? Some of these. This is my fifth one. Okay, and and why do you come to this? I grew up with the Commodore. I wear the label in my town with my friends as the Commodore. <laughs> I wear it with pride. I hadn't heard that it. one. My wife came up with that for me. Was great. She's like, "Oh, you're a Commodore." And I said, "I love it. I'll wear it all day long." Right. Guilty right. as charged. And, and what was your first computer? My first computer was a Vic Twenty. There you go. I think that was that 1981, was... which would have made me eight years old. Right. And then two years later, we upgraded to a 64. We got a tape drive, so of course everything was nice and small. Oh, mass storage. Yep, mass storage. And uh, then my dad came home with a 1541, and man, we. You know, oh, mass mass storage. On from mass slow storage. Slower in the cassette. And now my deal is, I want to make sure that all these games are preserved. So along with well, yeah. the Software Preservation Society and um, Jim with the SuperCard Pro and the CryoFlex team in Germany. Right. I've, I mod these drives so that they can read the disk correctly, both sides, without having to flip them over. Um, now, now, if I if I were to design the 64 in an FPGA or something like that, is there a software base I could use, or not really? It's 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 there, but you're not really can sell a product using the old Commodore 64 games. The trademark still exists. Yeah, not really. Right. So when Jerry Ellsworth did the DTV, they went out and got those licenses, is my understanding. Oh, I have no idea. I yeah. have a DTV, what a nice little device it is. Yeah. Knowing that you can put an entire Commodore system into a tiny little chip. Yeah, and you couldn't back, back in the day, but you can now. Yeah, yeah. And, there, and especially there was too much non-digital going on back in the day to put it into an in-MOS chip. 
Right. And now the chips do allow us to emulate analog stuff just by doing digital representations of it. Bring your own table, actually. Let's see him stop you from setting it up. A little foldable thing. <laughs> Or spread a blanket on the floor, you know, like they do in the street vendors and stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I could do that. Yeah. Let's we'll see them stop you. You're <laughs> so, what's your name? I'm Joshua Johnston. And how, how long have you been coming to these shows, or is this your first time? This is my second show. I was here two years ago, came back this year. Uh, I collect all sorts of the older machines. Uh, right. Commodore was where I started. So, did you have one when you were young? I did. I had a Commodore 64, was kind of a shut-in for a while, <laughs> but I had the 64 and then finally wrangled the money to get myself a 128D. Wow. Just like this one here. So, yeah, so show me what you got here. Uh, this is just a standard 128D metal body, and I've had it about two, three years now. Haven't really done anything custom to it. Uh, I got in a little bit late in the life cycle for the Commodore systems. Yeah, and there's no Commodore left, so people don't see the trail going back to the beginning. They, they see Apple saying that they were the beginning, but they don't see the there's trail so going back to the There's so much of a story out there about the Apple guys and what they did, and I'm looking at that and going, where's the other half of the history? Because yep. that's yep. the half I was living on. They, they, plus, as you heard me say, they took more pictures than we did, they got a lot obviously. Of pictures. <laughs> But so. for me, this this was my gateway to the world. I right. did the foam freaking thing. I did the social engineering thing. So I finally got to the point where I could pick up another one and try and pick up where I left off, only without all the freaking Very things cool. like that. So. Very cool. So you coming back next year? Planning on it. I'm Very cool. Right all right. Hi, who are you? You're with the Portland Commodore Users Group, or yeah, what hi. are you with? I'm Greg. Uh, hi, Greg. Portland Commodore Users Group. Uh, I have also developed the Commodore server uh, and the Comet 64 internet modem. Okay. And how many people are here from the user group with you? Uh, officially two. Okay. <laughs> And how much of this stuff here is your guys? Uh, this whole table. Yeah. Wow. We have we have remote members. So Rick, Rick is a Californian, right. but he's also okay. one of our favorites. Well, and I remoted in once many years ago exactly. too. Yes. Yeah. So what do you have here? What, what's what's this computer here? Uh, so this is um, it's just a standard 64C, uh, but I but I got one of those new clear cases that were made on Kickstarter. Okay. Where where the guy had to take the Commodore name off because Commodore went after him for it. Yeah. So well that's cool. Just, now I. I know the guy that did the, we called it the uh, CR for cost reduce back then, so it became the C. Uh, it's an engineer named Katayama, uh, did all the hybriding and stuff for that. So that's cool. So that's and, what this is, and it's um, it's connected to Commodore server uh, through a Comet modem. And then over here, this is my this is my workhorse, my blue Commodore 64. Uh, well loved, well used. Uh, right. It's got a built in joystick, and okay. a built in fire button on the side. Right. Uh, and inside is a number of things. These are all the routes for the, for the custom joystick, and then I've got a uh, Jiffy DOS in there. Nice thing about through hole is you can modify things. I know it's really or the, the, the layperson. <laughs> so. Wow, um, very cool. Also, I have set up here a. Um, this is the new Comet, and it's hooked up to my logic analyzer at the moment. But um, this is. Um, called the Comet VBS, okay. and what it is is it allows you to, it's, it's a haze compatible modem. Oh, okay. So you can type AT commands, and um, in fact I have it set up, I can just, I can just do that right there, AT, or ATI shows you the information. Right. Um, See, I used to own an ISP, so I used to know all the AT commands, and I remember none of them. Excellent. Yeah, I don't yeah, we used to have to punch in number of rings and all that. Man. It can actually run in standalone mode too. I, I could have this pulled out. It runs on USB power, or I've actually hooked it up to a battery pack too. Um, it runs on USB power. It has a RS-232C port on it, so you okay. can actually run or um, use this modem from other comp, uh, Commodore computers or any computer for that matter. Gotcha. Um, and then 
lastly, it has an IDC port on it. Okay. So I could actually load um, stuff off of it, and the files come from the internet, from Commodore server, or other dev or other places. Oh, cool. So you can load streaming the data right off the internet. Wow. Um, that's part of the point of Commodore. So why, why, why do this with Commodore? Why not be using newer computers that are faster and more powerful? Well, because this is the most awesome computer ever built, <laughs> except for the 128, of course. <laughs> You can say this is this 27 million made. 27 million. This is my baby. But, um, yeah. I'm, I'm never embarrassed to be, you know, be the younger brother of the, you know, where the 64 is the captain of the, of the team. Yeah, not a problem.